stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. My name is Rick Renner, and I want to say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This is going to be an awesome year. I prophesy it to you in the name of Jesus. And today I'm here with Denise. Hey, sweetie. Hi, Rick. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Denise. It's going to be a great year. Well, I don't know what you did last <laughs> night, but in Russia, it was quite a celebration. New Year's is the big celebration in Russia, and the sky was loaded with fireworks. I mean, just <laughs> loaded. In fact, there are so many fireworks going on out where we live. We run from one side of the house to the other side of the house to look out different windows in different directions. It's like 4th of July on steroids. You have to see it to believe it. I remember a couple of years ago, we went to Joel's house, his wife, Olga, their kids, all the renters went to their house for New Year's and they live in a big, tall apartment complex. Now, Moscow is a city of apartments. It's like caverns and caverns of apartments. And all the grandkids were there. And at midnight, all the fireworks went off. It was like we were in a war zone. It sounded like bombs. I mean, lights everywhere, ricocheting between apartment buildings and grandkids just going crazy with joy, running from window to window to window. It was something, wasn't it? It was so fun. They were screaming and screaming, and we were laughing and laughing, and we would run to them, with them to the other window, and then we'd run with them to the other window. We had such a blast. Anyway, that's the way it happens in Russia today. But when I was a child, growing up with my parents and my sisters, New Year's Day was a day of recovery. Everybody was recovering from the night before. We were always up late with friends. Now, Denise's family, they didn't have a lot of close friends. We didn't have anything to recover from. But in our family, <laughs> we had things to recover from because we were up, we were laughing, we were playing board games, we were watching television. And on New Year's Day, we ate. Black Eyed Peas and ham. No, we had Black Eyed Peas on New Year's Eve. No, but we on, had it on New Year's Day. Well, uh, for us on New Year's Day, we had leftovers from Christmas. And sometimes, you know what else we had? I oh, can't believe we're saying this. After yesterday, we taught them being <laughs> disciplined and exercising. <laughs> but on New Year's Day, sometimes we ate leftover turkey or ham. We had turkey sandwiches, ham sandwiches. And sometimes we had meatloaf sandwiches. Oh, I loved meatloaf sandwiches. Have you ever had a meatloaf sandwich? My mother made the best meatloaf when I was a kid. Anyway, this is New Year's. Happy New Year's. We're so glad we've entered the new year. We've closed a chapter. That's behind you. Now we're starting a new chapter. Are you ready to start a new chapter? That's why today we're going to talk to you about making decisions. And we're offering you our series, which is called Decisions. Are you going to follow through this time? It comes with a great study guide. It comes in multiple formats. It's five parts. Order your copy today. We're also offering you my book, which is called The Point of No Return, Tackling Your Next New Assignment with Courage and Common Sense. I wrote this at my first desk in our first home in the Soviet Union when our family had passed the point of no return. My heart was alive with the subject, and this book is overflowing with life. If you feel God is calling you to do something new in this year, tackling something new, maybe you've thought about it before, but you've never had the courage to do it, the subhead says, you can tackle your next new assignment with courage and common sense. God wants to give you a good dose of common sense about how to tackle what he's asking you to do, and you can do it. And by the way, we're also offering two books to everyone who becomes a financial partner with our ministry. This is the new year. Maybe you've been praying about where to give. Would you give to us? Become a partner with us. Help us take the teaching of the Bible around the earth to people that are so hungry for the Word of God. Proverbs 10.21 says, The lips of the righteous feed many. Join us in feeding many who are so hungry for the truths of the Bible. People are crying 
for somebody to bring them teaching to feed their soul, teaching that they can trust. And when people initiate their partnership relationship with us, and you can do that by going online or calling us, we always send them my book, Life in the Combat Zone, because it's dedicated to our partners. And we always send them Denise's book, The Gift of Forgiveness. But today, Denise and I are talking about making decisions. I have my Bible. Hope you have your Bible. Denise, you got your Bible? Not my Bible. All right. I'm going to use my notes because we have a lot of notes today. And so far, we've talked to you about making the decision to lose weight, making the decision to exercise. And today we're coming to the third decision you need to make as you begin the new year, making the decision to get your finances in shape. Now, don't turn off the TV. Don't turn off the device. We understand that if your finances are a mess or they're not what they should be, it may take time to get them in shape. You might even say, oh, I've tried before. I've already given up. You don't have to give up. Just begin where you are. You can make the decision. Making a decision is a part of repentance. The word repent means to make a decision, to stop what you've been doing, and to start something new. You can begin a new chapter starting today to get your finances in shape. And today I want us to begin our teaching with Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. And in this verse, the Apostle Paul was talking about him accomplishing what God had asked him to accomplish. And listen to what he says. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. But notice he says, forgetting the things which are behind. That word forgetting, the Greek word epilanthanomai. Listen to what it means. This word forgetting means to turn away from and forget. To put aside, to deliberately ignore, to purposefully disregard, to completely forget. It denotes something that may have really been true about you in the past, but it's no longer applicable. It depicts something that is finished, done with. It is obsolete. It is no longer applicable. Isn't that power, Denise? Oh, I, I love it because you can let go of the past. It's no longer applicable and you can take a hold of the future. And, and Rick, I just want to encourage our television audience about the power of the Holy Spirit to help them make these decisions. Because, because if we just look to ourselves, God never just meant for us to just look to ourselves to do hard things. He is there as a partner to help us make these decisions and and losing weight exercising doing something about your finances these are things that our flesh just like fights against but that our spirit so longs to get things in order in our life and the holy spirit when we say lord i want to do this i want to i want to Get my finances in order. When we say that, and as Rick has been saying, it's repentance. When we say that and we agree with the Holy Spirit, we invite Him in as a partner to help us do this. So I wanted to add that, Rick, because some of these subjects are kind of hard. Well, I appreciate that. The Holy Spirit is there to help us. You know, you can make a decision, but we need the power of God to carry it out, and the power of God is yours. But what I want you to see from this verse is that your past is your past. Hey, this is a new year. You can't do anything about what happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. This word forgetting means yesterday is irrelevant. It is obsolete. Quit wallowing around about yesterday. You cannot do a thing about it. You have to deal with what you're facing today and tomorrow. In fact, the verse goes on to say forgetting what is behind. behind. The word behind, the Greek word apiso, Listen to what it means. It describes something that should be put behind. It could be translated obsolete, irrelevant, something that should be relegated to the past, abandoned or left behind. So abandon it. Wow. It's obsolete. Leave it there. There's nothing you can do about yesterday. You have to deal with today and tomorrow. That's all you can fix. And that's why Paul goes on to say, reaching forth unto the things that are before. Reaching forth is a Greek word, ep. It means a runner 
who is running with all of his might. Listen to this. It depicts a foot racer. It is the image of a racer who's pressing forward so hard and is so stretched out that his entire body is arching forward as his arms reach ahead to grasp the goal before him. You've got to strain toward your future. Mm -hmm. You've got to strain toward getting your finances in shape. In fact, the verse says, what is before you? That word before is a Greek word which literally means what is right in front of your face. You can do nothing about what is behind your back. You can only deal with what is in front of your face. So financially, what is in front of your face? You might say, a mountain, a mess. Well, it's time for you to climb the mountain. You can conquer it. You really can. And in Philippians 3.14, Paul continues, and he says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul had a specific mark for his own life. He had something in his mind. It was not imaginary. It wasn't just floating out there. It was concrete to him. He had a specific goal. But Paul says, I press. Wow, that word press, Denise, it is a Greek word, dioko. The word dioko. The word dioko is a very famous ancient Greek word which denotes the actions of a hunter who pursued and followed after an animal in order to apprehend it, capture it, and kill it. It pictures a hunter who strategically followed after an object, a principle, a person, or a reward until it was captured. Mm. So you have to make a decision. You know what? I don't have my game today. I don't have my goal yet. Mm. But today, in front of me is a goal, and like a hunter, I'm going to begin to press toward my goal. I'm going to follow the tracks to financial freedom. I'm going to follow the scent to financial freedom. I'm going to start in my pursuit. I'm going to begin my hunt today. And Paul goes on to say, I press or I hunt for the mark. The word mark is a Greek word skopas. And the word skopas means the finish line for a runner or it depicts a target or a goal. Well, you're never going to reach your financial goal if you don't have one. You have to have a goal. Paul said, I'm hunting for the mark. He knew what was in front of him. This wasn't imaginary. It wasn't just some goal that floated in his mind. He had a concrete goal he was shooting for. And in the context of our finances, what is your goal? For example, do you want to get out of debt? Do you want to quit using credit cards? Maybe you want to pay off your car. Maybe your goal is to pay off your house. Maybe your goal is just to get in a position where your finances are more manageable. Or maybe you want to become so financially free that you can give freely every time the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Some people can't give because they're so in debt. Maybe you just want to get free so you can give. You can give more to the work of the Lord. What is your goal? What is your mark? You have to have a financial goal. Now, when we come to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, Paul says this about attaining goals. I therefore so run. We've seen that this word run is a Greek word treko. We've seen this every program, but I want to read it to you again because it's so very important. This word run pictures one who's jumped into the race. If you're going to reach the goal, you have to jump in the race. You have to make the decision. Today is the day I'm going to begin. I'm going to jump in the race of getting my finances in shape. Pressing ahead with all of his might to reach the goal set before him. Running at such a pace that both feet never hit the ground at the same time. His eyes are fixed on the finish line. The runner makes a dash for it as he steadily moves toward the goal. And likewise, for you to attain the financial goals before you. You have to jump in the race and you or you and your spouse or whoever you're working with, you have to make a decision together and enter into a covenant. We're going to reach this. We're going to start today. We're not going to retreat from this goal. We won't get there overnight, but we're going to begin moving our feet today and we're going to begin moving in the direction of getting our finances in shape. You have to begin. You just have to begin. It's like eating right. You have to begin. Or exercising. If you don't begin, you're in trouble. You have to begin. You have to begin with your finances as well. And Paul goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 9, 26, I don't run uncertainly. This word uncertainly, the Greek word adalos, means 
uncertainly, aimlessly, with no direction. It describes one with no plan, no aim. And in the context of finances, if you don't have a plan, you're never going to change. You have to have a financial plan. And if you don't know how to make a financial plan, then ask somebody to help you. Ask somebody to help you. There are a lot of people around you, if you'll just open your heart and will be humble enough to say, hey, I need help to get my finances in shape, I guarantee God has already positioned somebody near you who can help you develop a plan. Uh, Rick, absolutely. And and I'm thinking about the Holy Spirit, because when we say, yes, I want to do that, the Holy Spirit, he falls right in with you to do it. And He's he empowers you to do it. He'll even show you who to talk to, because he cares. So he cares about everything that concerns you. You know, when I was growing up, our family was a middle class. Maybe we weren't even middle class. I had wonderful parents. They did their very best to provide, but we didn't have a lot of extra money. I can never remember having extra money. And so I never really had money. I didn't know how to manage money. I didn't know anything about money. And when Denise and I got married, I carried that ignorance into our marriage. I didn't understand money at all. I just did not. It's something I had to learn through the years. And to learn, I had to ask for help. I remember when we first got married, I asked a man in the city where we lived. He sat down with us and began to teach us how to develop an envelope system. How I hated that system. I just hated it. The discipline of having to live by what you put into various envelopes. But it helped us. If you don't have a system, then you're never going to reach your goal of getting your finances in shape. And today, Denise and I have very concrete goals about our finances. We really do. And we live by our goals. You know, if you're going to reach your goal, you have to be disciplined. You have to make decisions. And when you have a goal, it really helps you make decisions. Because if you have a goal, you know what you can do and you know what you can't do. Because if you do some things, you're not going to reach your goal. So we sat down every Friday, every Friday, even if we don't need to. Even if we already know all the answers, doesn't matter. It's part of our system. You have to have a system. You don't want to run aimlessly. You want to move your feet, consistently move forward. And every Friday, Denise and I sat down for about an hour and we go over our finances. We look at what we're doing. Where are we? We look every week to see what we're giving to other ministries. I'm talking about us personally. Our ministry also gives. Our ministry does a lot of work around the world. When you partner with our ministry, you are touching a lot of lives, I guarantee you. But I'm talking about what we do personally. We sit down and look at our personal giving one time every week. Our giving is never nonchalant or casual or random or spontaneous. It is very serious to us. We have a plan. We're running with a plan. And I'm telling you, you need a plan if you're going to be financially free. Now, I want to read to you some verses. Proverbs 10, verse 4. How I love this verse. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. You've got to be serious about your finances if you want to be free. Or how about Proverbs 10, verse 18? Love this verse. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth. Through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through. You've got to pay attention. If you don't pay attention, things are going to fall to pieces. Or how about what the Living Bible says in Proverbs 24, verses 3 through 5. Any enterprise is built by wise planning, becomes strong through common sense, and profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts. If you want to build your house financially strong, then you need to have wise planning. You become strong through common sense, and it's very important that you stay abreast of all the financial facts in your life. Or how about Proverbs 27, verse 23? It says, Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks, and look well to thy herds. Flocks were huge investments back in those times. It's saying, if you want to be blessed financially, you have to look well to your flocks and to your herds. You've got to really know what you have. You've got to know where you are. You've got to know how to manage it and how to grow it. Now, you may feel like, oh, 
he's speaking so far over my head. No, I'm not. You can do what I'm talking about. You just need to make a decision to begin. You just have to begin. Put your bills on the table in front of you with your Bible, with your spouse or a friend, and say, where do we begin? What are we going to stop doing? What are we going to keep doing? And what is our goal? Then you've got to jump in the race. Anybody can do this. Just begin. You may not reach victory by tomorrow. You may not even reach your goal by the end of the year. But hey, today is the first day of the year. It's a great day for you to begin making some decisions. Right, Denise? Oh, yes. It's, it's very important to make decisions. Uh, two years ago, I made some decisions and changed some things in my life. And when I made that decision, and I kept doing it over and over and over and over again, um, had to do with finances, had to do with my body, it had to do with spending time with God, it had to do with writing things down, exercising. But I'm telling you, as I did it one day after another day, after another day, after another day, after another day, I began experiencing victory in my life. And you know, when you make a plan, your flesh will always rebel against it. That's just a fact. Your flesh will always rebel against discipline, but discipline really is the route to freedom. It's the route to freedom. Mm -hmm. Discipline is the way to feeling better about your body physically because you've lost weight. Discipline is the way to feeling physically better because you start exercising. Discipline is the way you're going to become financially free. And you will be so glad you made the hard choices and stuck with the plan. But according to Paul, you need to jump in the race and you need to have a plan. So start today. We're out of time, but we'll be back in just a moment. And Denise and I are going to pray for you. Decisions. Are they easy or difficult for you to make? Many people make decisions, but don't keep them. In the five-part series, Decisions, Rick Renner will help you make decisions about your diet, fitness, finances, relationships, and your walk with God. If you're ready to lose weight, ready to start a new plan to exercise, to get your finances in shape, to improve your relationships, and to take your walk with God up a notch, then you need Decision to help you actually do it. Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10. This series will help you make the overdue decisions that you've wanted to make for a long time. In addition to this teaching series, you can also purchase the hardback edition of The Point of No Return. In this book, Rick describes how to take steps into your God-designed future. God is waiting for you to get moving, but He will not take the steps of faith for you. You can do it, but you need to know how. That is what you'll discover in this timely book. Don't delay ordering your copy today. It will propel you into the plan God has planned for you. Order your copy of The Point of No Return today for only $20. Don't miss this special offer, Decisions and The Point of No Return. Call now, 1-800-742-5593 or go to renner.org. Call or go online now. The Good News Church is one of the largest Protestant churches in the former Soviet Union. Rick Renner received a revelation to open churches in the former Soviet Union. Following his call, he moved from America to Latvia in 1993, opening the first Good News Church in Riga. A few years later, in the year 2000, the Moscow Good News Church was opened in Moscow. And in 2007, the Kiev Good News Church was opened in Kiev. All the churches that were started by Pastor Rick continue to grow and develop. The Riga Good News Church today has 1,000 members. The Moscow Good News Church is attended by 2,000 members. But over 5,000 people from Moscow actually consider it their spiritual home. In the near future, Pastor Rick plans to keep opening new branches of the church in different parts of Moscow. Our ministry also ministers to people throughout our online Good News Church, which provides spiritual food to people, responds to their spiritual needs, and provides a marvelous opportunity to minister to people who do not have a local church to attend. We have more than 40,000 online church members from 56 countries every month. Over 300 volunteers minister to these precious souls. We all have a part to play, and we ask you to join us in partnership so that we can continue to establish people in the Word of God in the local church. Please call 1-800-742-5593 or go online to renner.org. With your generous support, we can continue to make a huge difference in people's lives and around the world. 
I want to say thank you for making time for us on New Year's Day. You've got a lot to do. You've got people you can talk to, family probably who are going to come see you today. And you made time for us. Denise and I want to say thank you. And in this program today, we want to really encourage you to make some decisions to become financially free in this year. You may not reach freedom overnight, but you can become freer. But you have to begin with a plan. And we're offering you our series called Decisions. Are you going to follow through this time? This series will really encourage you to make a decision and to stay on track. It comes with a great study guide. We're also offering you my book called The Point of No Return. Please order this book. If you've made the decision to make some changes in your life, you need strength to stay on track. This book will really help you to know you've made a right decision. It will give you the common sense and the courage to know what steps you need to take order your copy today. And remember that for everyone who becomes a partner with our ministry, a financial partner you give every month to help us take this teaching to other people, we always initiate that partnership relationship by sending a copy of my book, Life in the Combat Zone. My friend, you can overcome any battle. That's what this book is about. And it's dedicated to our partners. That's why we give it to people who become partners. And we also send Denise's book, The Gift of Forgiveness. But I want to tell you that we're coming to an area near you. We're coming to Madison, Alabama, to Cornerstone Word of Life Church with Pastor Mark Garver, January 18th to 19th. Then to Colorado Springs, to Church for All Nations with Pastor Mark Cowart on February the 2nd. Then we're coming to Newark, Texas, to be with Pastors George and Terry Pearsons at Eagle Mountain International Church on February the 9th. Then we're coming to Cedar Springs, Michigan, to City Church with Pastor Doug Bergsma. That's February the 15th. And then Denise and I are wrapping it up at Granville, Michigan, Resurrection Life Church with our friend Pastor Dwayne Vanderklok on February the 16th. You know, Denise and I only come to the United States a couple times a year to minister in churches. We would be delighted if you could meet us in one of those churches where we could look into our eyes and we could personally meet you We just love to meet people who really watch our program, but we want to pray for you. Father, we thank you for this wonderful New Year's Day. What a blessing. Thank you that we could meet together in this context today. Thank you for helping us make decisions for the new year. There's nothing we can do about yesterday. It's obsolete, but we can reach forth toward the future and we can make changes. And we ask you to give us the plan and give us the spirit empowered discipline to carry it out. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you tomorrow. But remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Rick Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity.